again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes and arachnids. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today we are going to do a knitting stitch. Yeah, it's been a long time uh, since I've done any sort of knitting tutorial, so I thought, you know what? Let's do it. Let's get a little nuts. In fact, let's get peanuts. This is the peanut stitch, and it is really quite easy absolutely love the look and it's sort of like a little optical trick if you will if you go around the silhouette it's like they are little peanuts stacked on top of each other and alternating it's really cute it's very simple and in spite of it being an eight row repeat you only really have to focus on two of those eight rows. The rest of it is predominantly just knit and purl rows. It's very, very simple once you get the hang of it. Now, let's back it on up here. Okay, so as you can see, as is, this piece does curl, and that is because it is pretty much a stockinette stitch where you have the knit stitches on the front facing side and purl stitches on the rear side, you know, the, 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 the wrong side. Um, now, you can alleviate this with a border. Um, so what to add a border, okay, this is totally optional. Uh, what you can do is you can add stitches to either side of your piece. Uh, so, for instance, uh, say add three on this side, then three on this side, and just knit those stitches regardless of whether it's the right side or wrong side. So you would knit the first three, knit the last three, regardless of right or wrong side. And then at the base, you would start your process by just doing the uh, the garter stitch for a few rows, again, to create a bit of a border. That is optional. Um, I think that this would be an incredibly great stitch for a baby blanket or an afghan because it is very, very simple as far as the repeat is concerned, and it has a slightly lacy texture, but not overtly so. And it's so easy! Yes, you will totally get to the point where you don't even need to think about the pattern. You can just go on autopilot based on where you are currently at. And not to worry, I will do a repeat or two for you. And so as far as what I used today, this is actually Red Heart Super Saver in, I believe, the colorway of beige, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I used... Do, do, do. These are my Chiaogu knitting needles. So this is a, a size 9, which is a 5.5 millimeter knitting needle. I have circulars here. You can use straight ones, really doesn't matter. Um, and for today's example, going to be using Lion Brand's Pound of Love in the colorway of Elephant Gray. Not sponsored, but always like to let you know what it is that I use in case if you want to duplicate the results. As far as yarn weight and needle size, I would say, you know, go with whatever is recommended on the ball band, um, you know, or perhaps, you know, a size up or down, depending upon your tension. Um, and, uh, well, that being said, Let's get started. Okie dokie. So first things first, we have our cast on of stitches. Now for this particular stitch, you're going to need a multiple of six stitches plus an additional five stitches. And that is for the basis of the pattern. Now, if you want to add a border, uh, you would cast on an additional even number of stitches and divide them. Uh, so for instance, say you wanted uh, three stitches on this side, three stitches on this side, you would cast on an additional six stitches, etc., etc. That is, of course, totally up to you. Now, for the cast on, I chose a knitted cast on, 
And I'm going to put the link to that video that I did in the description box down below. So if you aren't familiar with the technique, you can refer back to that, no problem. And so what I did was a total of 17 stitches that I cast on. I have two multiples of six, so that's my 12, and then an additional five, so I have a total of 17. I didn't go for adding any additional stitches to this swatch. Now, what I would also recommend is do a swatch first before diving into a blanket. That way you can get an idea of how many stitches you will eventually need for the width of the project that you're going for. Just personal recommendation, swatching is not a bad idea. Also, it will get you used to the stitch and its formation, and then you can dive right into the blanket if that's what you choose to make. Um, well, let's get to it. All right. Row one. Okay, now hopping right into our stitch here. Now, this is, of course, with the assumption that if you are doing a border that you've already done a couple of base rows first. So, going to do knit stitches. Yes, this entire first row is quite simply just knit stitches. Very, very, very straightforward. Now, whether you are a, a picker or a thrower, continental or English style, does not make a difference. Me, personally, this is how I learned with my yarn in my right hand. Some people say it's slower. Me, this is what I'm, <laughs> this is what I'm comfortable with. So just knit your way all the way across to the very end. So this row and the following row, I'm going to do the entire row on camera. Subsequent rows, I'm going to skip ahead. But yeah, it's just all knit stitches. So just inserting, wrapping around, pulling through and off. And one of the things that I really like about this pattern is that you do have a lot of rows where it's just knit and just purl, and it's sort of like a mini vacation in between the actual patterning involved. So we are just about there at the end. This last one here. And there you go. So that is Row one, just all knit stitches. Row two. Okay, row two, quite simply, is just all purl stitches. So you can see we already have our purl bumps. So just following suit in the stockinette style. So now something that I had used to have trouble with actually is when I was doing my first stitch as a purl stitch, I went underneath the stitch like this, and then I would uh, do my purl stitch. Actually, you need to go underneath the yarn and then into that first stitch. Otherwise, you end up with a yarn over. You, a you actually end up with an extra stitch. So yes, going underneath the yarn and then doing your first stitch. Otherwise, yes, you end up with too many stitches and that can be a bit of an issue. You know, it, it will throw you off and I speak from experience. So just going to purl all of these stitches all the way across and there's only 17 for my swatch so it's really not that bad. And then in the next row, we are going to start with the actual 
patterning of the peanuts. And as I said previously, you only really need to focus on two of the rows out of the eight. And those two rows are almost exactly the same with the exception of how you begin and end the row. Otherwise, they're completely the same. So it's pretty easy and pretty straightforward. And you will find out just what I mean in a moment. All right, one more. And there we go. All right, so that is row two, all finished and ready to go. And hunky dory. Okay. So that's row two. And this is, you can see it's already starting to curl a little bit. But again, like I said, you know, you can bypass that with a couple of rows of garter stitch or seed stitch, what have you, something that is less apt to curl. So let's move on to row three. Okay, row three. So it's rows three and seven are, those are going to be the pattern rows, if you will. So for row three, going to start by knitting the first stitch. Now, going to bring the yarn to the front as if you're going to be doing a yarn over, okay? Then slip the next stitch knitwise. So we're not actually knitting it or purling it, just slipping it off onto our right needle knitwise. Then knit the next two stitches normally. Now, because we have this sort of yarn over, I like to make sure that it's in between the two stitches, the one that we knitted and the one that we slipped. So in between those two and sort of hold it down with my thumb and then knit these next two stitches. Okay, and then that slipped stitch. Okay, this is sort of the yarn over. And so it's this third one here. We're going to slip this third stitch over these two knit stitches. Okay, so going in and also it helps if you hold on to these two that we knitted. So up and over and off. There we go, and that, that's what creates that little bar for the peanut. And this yarn over that we did, this creates that little eyelet. So from here, knit the next three stitches. Okay. Then again, yarn to the front and slip as if to knit. Knit the next two stitches. and then pass that slip stitch up and over and off. Okay, knit the next three again. Okay. 
yarn to the front, slip as if to knit, knit the next two stitches, and pass that slip stitch up, over, and off and knit the last stitch. There we go. The hard part is over. So as you can see, we have three of those bars. Okay. All right. Onwards to row four. Row four. Okay, so row four, because this is the quote-unquote wrong side, and you can see all of our purl bumps, it is going to be a purl row. Now, again, going underneath the yarn, just going to purl all of my stitches all the way across, even those yarn overs. And I know I said that I was going to skip this, but I am going to show you because it can look a little bit, a little bit weird, a little bit funky. This yarn over, yes, we are going to purl that stitch as well, just like any other. And by the end of this row, I should have 17 stitches, just like when I, I first began. And for those of you that are interested in sort of the, the mechanics of lace making and so forth, for every increase that you created, you need a decrease. And when we brought the yarn to the front, that is referred to as a, a yarn over, and that's creating a stitch. When we passed the slip stitch up, over, and off, that decreases a stitch. So there's equilibrium. If you just created yarn overs but had no decreases, your piece would grow. And if you past slip stitches over, but you didn't have any increases, your piece would shrink. This way, we're creating an even number of stitches throughout. All right, so all of our purl stitches are done, and we shall continue on with row five. Okay, row five. Row five and row six, again, are very, very simple, but want to show you, see right here, this is where we created that yarn over, that little bit of an eyelet. And albeit, this does not look like much at the moment because the pattern really hasn't start to develop. So for row five, it is quite simply just all knit stitches. Very simple, very easy, very straightforward. Besides, it gives us an opportunity to chit-chat a little bit, say hello, hello, and I like spending time with you. And I do have some other ideas of various knitting tutorials and things. Also, for those of you that are interested, uh, I did do a couple of videos specifically on knitting lace and sort of the ins and outs of knitted lace making. Um, I even did a sort of an organic mystery lace project, if you will. Had a lot of fun with that. In fact, I will put a, a link to that as well in the description box down below. And it sort of demystifies 
knitting lace. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so this row is almost done. There we go, so that is row five. Okay, row six. Row six, it's just a purl row. Just going to work our way across with just purl stitches. And then row seven, we're going to do another pattern row. Now, like I said before, it will be essentially the same as row three, with the exception of how we begin and end the row. Otherwise, yes, it is pretty much the same. And what I'm going to do is after I finish this row and we do row seven, then going to sort of do a sort of a fast forward so that we can do a repeat of rows three and seven together. And at that point, I think you guys should have a good understanding of what it is that you need to do in order to do this pattern. All right, so just a few more. And do, 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 two more. All right, now for the fun part, row seven. All right, so row seven is where the pattern will stagger, and we will have eyelets in between where we had them before. So we have one here, here, and here. For this row, we're going to have one here and one here. Now to get there, going to start by knitting four. For row three, we only knitted one. So this way, we're going to sort of scoot to the good stuff. So going to knit four. Okay, so knit four, and then bring the yarn to the front, slip as if to knit, knit the next two stitches, pass the slip stitch over those two, knit the next three, Bring the yarn to the front, slip as if to knit, knit the next two stitches, and then pass that slip stitch up, over, and off. And going to knit these last four stitches. We started by knitting four, we're going to finish by knitting four. All righty. Then going to 
do a bunch of rows of just purling and knitting. So this next row will be row eight. So for row eight, going to purl our way across, um, then going back, row one, row one we started with knitting all the way across, and row two, purling all the way across. So right now going to do a, a purl row, then a, a knit row, then a purl row, and then that will bring us to row three, where I will meet back up with you, okay? So I'm sure you guys can do this. So purl a row, knit a row, purl a row, and I will be right back. Alrighty, so after purling a row, knitting a row, and purling a row, we are ready for row three, where we will effectively knit a row, but with our patterning. All right, so let's hop right in. And again, you can just look at your pattern and see where you're at. See, over here is where we have our previous eyelet. Well, we need one over here to do the staggering. So instead of knitting four, we're only going to knit the first one and then start right in, just like we did down here. So, knit this first one. Then bring the yarn to the front. Slip as if to knit. Knit the next two stitches. And pass that slip stitch up and over and off. Knit the next three stitches. Bring the yarn to the front. Slip as if to knit. Knit the next two. Pass that slip stitch up over and off. Knit the next three stitches. Yarn to the front, slip as if to knit, knit the next two stitches, pass the slip stitch up over and off. And knit the last stitch. All right, so, whoop, sorry, my cord got caught there for a second. Okay, so right now we are back to the wrong side, the purl side. So for three rows, rows four, five, and six, going to do a purl row, a knit row, and a purl row, and then I will meet back up with you for row seven for the staggered patterning that we have going on, all right? So I will see you at row seven, just a purl row, a knit row, and a purl row, and I will meet back up with you. Alrighty, so the pace de resistance, row seven, for the staggering of our pattern, and I think it looks gorgeous already. So as you can see, at the beginning of the row, the eyelet is right smack dab next to the edge here. So it's gonna be here and here that we create the new eyelets. So going to knit four and then get into 
the patterning. So knit four. And that is what I was referring to before as far as eventually you will get to the point where, yeah, you don't even need to think about which row you're on, whether it's three or seven, you can just go based on how it looks as opposed to having to take notes and tally marks and so forth. All right, so we knit four, bring the yarn to the front, slip that first one as if to knit, then knit two, Okay, slip this stitch up and over, pass it over, those two, boop, knit three, okay, then yarn to the front again. Slip as if to knit. Knit the next two stitches. Pass that slip stitch up, over, and off. And we've reached the last four stitches. We started by knitting four, we end by knitting four. And that, my dears, is the pattern. So we are on row seven. So row eight would be a purl row. And if you do not use a border, okay, if you're not using a border, what I would do, this is me personally, okay? What I would do is after purling this next row, the row eight, okay, then I would do my bind off, okay? And let me show you real quick. Okay, so this is my bind off. So I did a, a purl row and then I did my bind off row, which I used the, the, the stretchy bind off, which I, I prefer because I have a tendency of binding off very, very tightly. And so this was the bind off that I used. And yes, I will put this in the description box down below as well. You can do a regular bind off really whichever you prefer. Um, so if you don't have a border after doing your, uh, your purl row, then do your knit bind off row, uh, or after doing your purl row, then finish up your border doing the same number of rows that you did at the bottom to start your border. Okay. If you have a border and there you go. And like I said, I think that this would make an incredible blanket. Uh, as far as a scarf, not so much because it's one-sided. Personally, I like double-sided knitting pieces for scarves. This would also make a really awesome infinity scarf or a cowl. Um, you know, I, I think that that would look really quite nice as well. At any rate, <laughs> that being said, I hope that you liked today's tutorial and that it inspired you to give this a try. You know, whether you knit or not, I want to inspire you. Um, and if you haven't, you know, I, I do know that a lot of you on this channel, a lot of my subscribers are not knitters, and I could not encourage you enough to give it a try. It really is not that difficult. And I do have a whole playlist of knitting tutorials from very, very basics to more advanced. This one I would say is fairly easy, sort of like a easy intermediate, if you will, because it is a pretty straightforward repeat. That's just my personal opinion. All right. So 
that being said, if you like today's video, give a little thumbs up button down below. You know that I appreciate your appreciation. And stay tuned for more because I do post often, whether it's crocheting or knitting or audiobook narration, video game playthrough and commentary on my other YouTube channel, Fiber Spider Games, or perhaps some tasty treats with my In the Kitchen playlist. I like variety, what can I say? At any rate, listen, until next time, you know what to do, right? I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and please stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now, everybody, and have a great, great day.